Whoa, it's Woolsey. Welcome back to the Random Colour Building Series, taking place every Wednesday until I finish the level. This is part 4. Somehow, I've remained relatively unscathed to the damage that the random hex picker has tried to cause, to the point where I'm actually asking for some spice going into this wave part, which is going to be weird because, as you can see, there are slopes that I'm going to have to decorate. And if you've been watching this channel for a while, you'll know that this really isn't my strongest forte. Is that, is, that a, is that a phrase? Strongest strongest suit, we'll say. Colour number one for today is a cyan. Okay. Ooh, it's like a turquoise-ish. Up next, uh, this, this colour picker loves green. Number three. Oh, look, man, I'm eating my words. I'm not very proud of myself right now. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is, this is terrible. It's not looking good for me right now. Colour five is my last hope. <sighs> colour five, come on. It's done. It's doomed. It, I- Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. I finally got what was coming, didn't I? Like, what is that? That is disgusting. None of these colors go, right? What is this? Is this like a- Why? Why is it love to give me the stupidest greens and then give me pink? This is what the last part would have looked like in these colors. That's disgusting. I'm not gonna lie. I did take a little bit of a break and I brainstormed a bunch of emergency ideas that I could use if I didn't think of anything else with the new color scheme. Which is how I'm currently feeling, so I'm going to end up making a moving background using some low opacity colour, and I'm not sure what. I think a black and green section could be fire, since the level starts off with green. This is going to work since the object line is green. Okay, we need less opacity. I think five was less. I could probably set these up in the middle and start them around about here to lock at the wave portal. Or do I want it to lock at the pink? I think the pink pad would be better, so let's just put it like right here. Okay, right there. 24 locks to the x-axis. Now, I realized while I was making that move trigger, why don't I just add this to a new group instead of five? Because then I can control the opacity of it and make it go up and down and it will look cool. Let's have 24 and zero opacity until it's needed. I can't fade it, so it's just gonna have to snap on. So I'm just copying the strip over one block and then adding a new group to it every time. Let's start off with 26. It's gonna move up 20, not 29. This always happens to me, easing out. And then when it gets to the top, it's going to move down 40. We'll make that happen like five blocks before the movement actually ends so that the next one starts before the other one finishes. And we shall continue that trend with the next one that's going to go up 40. So it moves 20 away from the middle, which is its vertical peak, its peak upwards. And then it will move 40 downwards, which is its downward peak. Then we're going to select all of these movements and copy paste them, move it one up and one right and change the group number by one. One. So we have a nice little staircase going. There we go. We have a wiggly wave background and it's kind of lame. Not gonna lie. Now I'm gonna play with some alpha triggers to make the beam go up and down in its opacity and then I'll go individually on each group. So there's like, oh, this is gonna be weird. There's two alpha groups for each object. That's what I'm saying. 25 is the one for everything and that's on 25%. So if I can make a loop that's increasing it by 0.1 upwards to like 0.75, something like this, where it's just increasing by a constant amount to a very obvious peak and then just going back down, which I can do just by copy pasting and flipping. And I can loop that whole thing backwards and forwards. So it's fading up and down without a fade time, essentially. I think it looks pretty cool. Then I'm going to start a different opacity loop that puts another group on it which is half so it's going to be half of whatever group it is at the time depending on what oh my god this is so hard to explain so this strip 26 this one right here that's half of the main opacity when it hits that point and it's going to happen at twice the rate of the regular alpha loop oh we could get real crafty with this actually to a maximum of 48 okay so let's just select all of these luckily the move triggers are on a different editor layer I can copy these, move it, say, five blocks to the right, and change the opacity to 0.25, and then put it to zero, maybe? Then it can go to 100, then 0.75. So it can loop through this entire thing. Oh, that was not what I was expecting, but it does look pretty cool, in my opinion. I'm probably going to delete the zero opacity frame because it's a bit too much. Oh, God. And we could copy this whole wave flip it around on the horizontal and move it down 
and up by five blocks. So it has a pattern that meets in the middle. Okay, we're getting somewhere. No fade times, by the way. Oh, that looks really cool. I flipped it on its side vertically. It's not bad. I'm telling you, it's not bad. What if I pulse that pink that's overlaying to a different color? This weird uh, turquoise looking thing. That honestly works better with the green, but I want to use the pink as well. So I thought, you know what, why not just make a pulse that's on a 0.5 hold. No fade times, obviously. And when that pulse ends, what if I just briefly change the green? This is not going to work for any sort of block design. I'm digging myself into a hole if I do this, but let's have a look at the monstrosity that we've just created. I don't know how this is going to go, man. It is the trippiest background I've probably made in a challenge, but I don't know how it's going to translate into design. I'm going to have to use a lot of black, I think, and then object pulse to white on 0.25, which is on 6. Okay, so what if I change the first movement to 220, which is 200 more than what it was. It used to be on 20, and then a bunch of blocks earlier we can offset that minus 200. So it could have a massive floating on transition that really works with the transition. Oh my god! What? <laughs> okay, just thought I'd say I am in the process of stripping back about two hours worth of work because it was terrible. I'll show you a clip of how it ended up and then I'll get straight back into the video. This is probably like two minutes in at this point and it's infuriating because I spent like two and a half hours on something that's like pointless. This building series has actually driven me crazy behind the scenes because I know that there are there is some potential in these color schemes, but I'm either blind or stupid because I just can't seem to unlock that potential very well. I feel like if I redid this challenge, I would get some terrible luck. Oh god, how is this gonna work? I've literally been nice and I can't even seem to handle it, which is just frustrating, but you know, you power through. Let's have a little look-see. How is it doing? Oh, it's not very obvious at all. My problem is that these alpha groups are also moving. That's a massive pain for anything that I want to do. Oh my god, dude. Okay, I am going to have to resort to just more strips overlaying in the foreground. Like, I don't know what else to do. T2, don't fade, don't enter, scaled up, on the side, rotating against the edges. Well, not rotating, but just like rotated against the edges. I don't know. And I could put another one here and put it on five or something. I don't know. This is just such a mess. Like, this just feels so lame. I could make them move, but then the rest of the block is just so, like, dark. I can't get this to work for the life of me, man. Big strip, group 51. Little strip, group 52. Minus 10, minus 5, 1 second. Then 10 and 20 on 2 seconds. And reverse that the other way. Copying these two triggers over and over again. Why not? You know what? <laughs> I'm too lazy to make the little one do anything different. So the little one can just go, like, a second later or so. Like, right here, when this other one is already moving back. You can go. Why not? Eh. It's okay, it's it's just lacking a lot for me. I don't know, it doesn't have the same blur as the background or anything. You can start off on editor layer 20, way out the way. Then I'm gonna copy paste you, increment the layer, and then start... Wait, no, it still needs the wobbly group, but we need some spice. Give me some like 26, 36... Hold on, let me just differentiate these first before I make a mess of things and get embarrassed. Sorry if I'm like salty in this episode, but I've spent like three hours on something that's not working and these colors are so frustrating, the way that they're pulsing, the way that I can't do anything with the alpha groups in the background. Like I've just, I've dug myself into a hole really and I need to just power through. So, okay, so for some of them, I can flip them upside down. For some of them, I can reverse them. And then the next one, maybe flip and reverse? I don't know. Hopefully this looks good, man. It just looks like a bunch of blurry objects, but... I don't know, this could work. It's like a light show, almost. I want to try and link it into some decoration now. So on the base turquoise blocks, I can have like a huge pulsing circle around the outside of this saw, like so. And then copying from the base green blocks, we can have a regular circle in the middle that isn't going to wiggle to remove that group. So there's like an unstable decoration piece that could probably be a bit smaller, and then a stable one in the middle. Okay, I'm going to come back to this in half an hour and see if I get any more ideas for the block design. <laughs> I got nothing, man. I'm just going to extend the outlines down to the bottom. 
Oh, let me just go to the editor layer so I can actually see what I'm doing. Oh, what is that? Oh my god, I was dreading coming back to this. I'm not gonna lie. Like, what is this? Okay, I have a backup plan. Honestly, <laughs> I shouldn't take a break away from the level to get ideas. I should just sit and look at the level because, you know, in like the first minute of recording or so, let me actually check. Okay, literally 1 minute 25 back into the recording and I've got something already. Switching the slopes to the clear lines instead of the clutterfunker looking blocks. Also, the reason that I'm using show hitboxes on Mega Hack V6 right now is so that I don't put a slope in like this that has a sticking out box that's like invisible. Okay, let's select all of the bottom structures. Oh, it's weird that that's a bottom structure. I'm gonna delete all of the top ones actually. Yeah, that was that, that should have done that ages ago. Okay, all the bottom structures are selected. Let's copy paste, put them on a different editor layer. I'm gonna put 30. I don't know. I've worked on this in so many different sessions that all of my numbers are completely messed up in my head. So we're going on 30. We're going to move it two steps down, give that a new group 53, and then keep on doing that until we get to like 57. Oh, uh, I should have. Okay, hold on. Starting from the furthest editor layer out, which is 34. I'm going to select all of these and then start moving them one to the left, okay? with the previous one selected as well, left. You see, it's going further and further out to the left. It shouldn't affect the gameplay. Ooh, it looks 3D. Oh, but that kind of sucks. Are people going to realize that it kills you on the very edge? I mean, if it's toggling, then yeah, they should, right? I'm going to put a half space between all of these toggle triggers. I shouldn't toggle because that makes the hitboxes unfair. Oh, bruh. Okay, I'm playing with the opacity, and it looks so much better when it turns back on when it's not full opacity, because then it looks like it's 3D. When it's not, it just looks like it's a line effect, which is what exactly what I want. It's exactly what I want. On color channel 1, I'm going to put some glow corner pieces using those 53 to 57 groups on upwards pattern like this. A half space between each one and then just an incremented group. So I'm changing the spikes and probably the saws. Their base is object and black on the detail. And then I want to copy paste, put them on a different editor layer, remove that 25 group that goes up and down like the object and the blocks, put it on B1, use black blending for the detail so it's hollow on the inside, and put a full opacity object line but then i want it on oh god and we're gonna give that a group 58 which is going to just toggle on and off in line with these alpha triggers there we go you see what it's doing to the spikes right there it's giving them a bit more clarity when it's needed all right i think i'm gonna leave this here for now i mean this part had so much potential when i made the background that's all the value in the video the rest is just kind of nonsense and me just like losing my mind ever so slightly that's what happens when you try to build for too long at once without many ideas. I mean, I definitely need to connect these saws to the ground and add like a functional ground spike, but for now, I think I'm going to leave this here. We can probably very quickly clean this up at the beginning of the episode, do something simple in this part, and then finish it off next time. And that's probably going to be on a premiere. Oh god, I don't know why I've just promised that, because <laughs> I started uni and stuff is pretty gonna run low like time <laughs> anyway thank you i'm exhausted thank you i'm not even on my profile what am i doing thank you for watching this geometry dash building challenge video random color building challenge video oh my god check the links in the description leave a like and subscribe and have a good day <laughs>